inside the COVID ICU. WGN's Dina Baer has an intimate look at the tireless effort of the people on the front lines. We were granted unprecedented access, something that wasn't possible in the early months of the pandemic. A chance to see up close the care provided in the COVID-19 intensive care unit. We spent hours with the team at North Shore University Health System's Glenbrook Hospital this week. Now we take you inside the busy facility where cases are climbing, but the nurses and doctors aren't letting up. Okay, next. It's morning rounds on 4 South. Was, did we just catch it so early in, in COVID and now it's looking traditionally COVID or is it something else? Critical care physician and pulmonologist Dr. Christopher Winslow and his team huddle outside each room. I would throttle back both decreases fentanyl and his first head, I think. Every bed but one is taken. Things have had reached a peak in, in, in May and June and, um, and now we're just you know, it's, it's disconcerting that we're right back there again, so we're very concerned. We're having a hard time getting him comfortable, and that's clearly our priority. Um, Just minutes so before our arrival, this patient, a man in his 50s, was struggling to breathe. He arrived in the ICU two days ago. This patient was very much on, on that line that, you know, he might teeter and need to be intubated, and, you know, this morning was the point where they said, you know, it's no longer safe to go without that breathing tube. We're going to turn on your side. But now he's visibly agitated. Can you grab us more flushes too, please? It's not uncommon after intubation. Why don't we wait that way you can get on your way and we can finish yeah. up and ICU then... nurse Penny Manjardi and her partner okay, work quickly to ease his discomfort. Give that. Yeah, I had another one actually in here, but I mean 25 is not going to do much. And then we're, we're having an issue with not a lot of good IV access. So um, Monica is going to try to get another IV in. It's okay. We're working to get you more comfortable. So I've been here. It'll be 10 years this year. You just come to work every day and never know exactly what you're going to face, but try to do the best that you can for that 12 hour shift. There's a steady rhythm on the unit, constant movement around still patients. PPE goes on outside each room. Uh, okay. This patient's mysterious pneumonia symptoms called for more investigation. So we're gonna do something called a bronchoscopy where I take a fiber optic instrument and go down through his breathing tube and wash in some fluid and then suck it back out and send that off for culture and lab laboratory analysis. Okay, you close them up here. There you go. Our secure tube is gonna be 80-80. 80-80? Yeah. The pace hasn't slowed for Penny down the hall. She relies on another nurse to keep the team updated as they continue their rounds. So they said give a one-time 100 milligram push. Sure. Fentanyl. So, okay, I'll go get another one. Yeah. Perfect. With all the medication we're giving him, blood pressure starts to fall, so we have to kind of switch out medications that don't have that same effect. Did pharmacy, are they sending up that drip? Before the patient was placed on the ventilator, okay. he was able to make a phone call so to his wife. Put the phone next to his ear so she could speak to him, um, you know, because ultimately we never know will they ever speak to each other again. Late morning, it's clear. He needs another procedure. Dr. Winslow arrives and gets suited up. It's just kind of uh, one, one room to the other, back and forth, depending on how unstable they are. And, and people with COVID can be very, very unstable. Unfortunately, that is, that's our reality. One uh, little chlorhexidine. Here, if you could open that up and just hand it to me. The team yeah. decides to insert a central line in the patient's internal jugular vein. It will be a critical tool in the weeks ahead. So there's our vein right there. See, and the artery is right next to it. But right now, they'll use it to deliver a medication to paralyze the muscles. Paralyzing is to make sure that they're not going to fight the ventilator, that that gives the whole body a chance to rest and let the ventilator do its work. We're seeing a fair number of you know, people in their in their 50s and their 60s showing up with very, very severe disease and, and ending up as profoundly ill as he is. And unfortunately, this is just the beginning of the course, you know, for him. This could be a quite a protracted episode. Hi, this is Melody again. There's another phone call to the so, patient's family. Yeah, so he's stable now. We got things kind of settled down. Just a task to ICU the, staff have added no to their problem. daily routine. Yeah, we'll, we are taking care of him for sure. He's in good hands, okay? 
we had been trying to keep him uh, away from the ventilator and, and just trying to, um, to help him ride this through, but I think his, his breathing had just become so labored and so difficult and his oxygen level so low that we just uh, unfortunately had to put the breathing tube in him. Although it means that his, you know, his mortality is certainly higher. 60% of people who require a ventilator you know, will will die in the ICU. Yeah, I know, I know. We're here holding his hand for you, that's for sure. It's one of those things that's yeah. emotional, but again, I want to care for, for people and make a difference, and I think that, you know, no, no other time has that impact really been felt quite like this. These healthcare workers have been at it without a break since the pandemic began, and they admit they're scared. This is not the worst of it. At Glenbrook, all rooms right now are devoted to COVID-19 patients. They're not at capacity, but they're filling up quickly. Back to you.